So I would like to speak today about the improvement um, of yield and performance of organic PV by using inline quality control systems and process monitoring. And I would like to give a short introduction, uh, speak about process control we use today um, and more and more inline quality control which are coming into the processes. And then I give a summary. The BIMA coding machinery is uh, focused on coding, printing and laminating equipment. Uh, the company vision is from lab to fab. We are building equipment from small scale, uh, sheet to sheet, up to big production lines, focusing on high tech uh, markets like print electronics, but also batteries and fuel cells, uh, solar, of course, um, and other markets. We have our own R&D center in Dormagen with 14 pilot lines. We have an R&D department. We're doing public funded projects specifically European ones. Um, and since 2018, we're part of the ATH holding in Hamburg. And to this holding, there belong the companies Krönert, Drytech, and ZAE Antriebssysteme. So all in all, 450 people and all focusing of coding, printing, and laminating technologies. You see here the markets again. So in most markets like OPV, for example, where we started in 2003, uh, we look on to very low TIL level. We're trying to scale people up to TIL 6, 7, and then, of course, into production TIL of 9, which we have done over the last 17 years in organic photovoltaics, but also in perovskite at the moment and before in diasensitized solar cells. So we have quite a long history in flexible uh, solar cells. The idea is always upscaling. Upscaling means you start with basic principles on sheet to sheet systems. You do a proof of concept if the device is bringing the performance you're looking for. And then you take this trans technology and translate it into pilot. Pilot means roll to roll, pre production style, higher speed. And here you're looking into coding and printing processes, specifically homogeneity of the coatings, efficiency of the overall process. Then you take this and you do a process optimization. You're coming into FAB uh, processes like drying, yield, quality control. And that's the normal way uh, we do. And we do this, of course, together with Krönert and Drytech in the different approaches. Um, but we are focused on the lab and pilot systems. And together we do the production lines. You see here some of the European funded projects and other projects we're doing at the moment. Of course, also some involved in um, OPV systems like OLED Solar, for example, but also Solar PV. I'm not going to detail here. Um, and from this, uh, I would like to come into process control. And what are we doing in OPV? What are we doing in print electronics? We mostly do a surface treatment of the PET films. Then we do printing or coating processes. At Kotima, we move more and more in digital fabrication. So we're using inkjet printing, we're using laser patterning. Uh, we work in nano print processes where you can modify the surface also for OPV to increase the efficiency. We do a lamination um, of different uh, systems, specifically encapsulation processes for OPV with uh, barrier films. And then we have pick and place processes when we make out of these uh, solar cells uh, modules. What's the important part? Of course, coding chemistry, coding processes, and which today is tension control, of course, material guiding systems, registration, inline parameter control, and the overall quality control. And this combined with all the other factors like drying, uh, environment control, uh, brings the overall performance um, of the product. What are process parameters we are looking for in the upscaling process? It's operation speed, it's the urology of the coding and printing inks, the substrate condition, tension control in material direction and cross direction, edge control uh, to have a precise resolution and a registration accuracy of the printing, the precision of coding operations, if we go into slot eye coding for OPV, for example, and then of course, the curing, drying and cross-linking processes. So all these process parameters have to be controlled. Um, I'm not going to detail how we do it today, 
But the difference to the work we did 10 years ago, we much more using big data industry 4.0. We're collecting much more data out of the um, inline control systems, but also out of the um, process control systems uh, with different uh, systems we're using, uh, like fiber optics, uh, like, for example, the design of drives we're using, control of drives, um, and so on. And we're moving in artificial intelligence, understand by algorithms uh, the data we're getting out of our systems and to see impact of parameters into our process. But where did it start? It started in uh, 2012. We did a European-funded project with the University of Thessaloniki and uh, a number of other partners, which was called Smartonics. And in this, we did a 20-meter-long um, pilot production line for OPV. And here we installed slotter coating, rotary screen, inkjet, laser. But we also already installed in 2012 inline optical metrology, uh, spectroscopy, and Raman. Um, and this was the start to try to understand also the performance of layers in the process. Um, and this is the status of the unit today. And there are several European projects at the moment running where we integrate additional uh, quality control system into the unit. And you can see here uh, quite a number of processes. So from the, from the binding, drying, laser scribing process, printing, drying, and then additional processes like encapsulation and uh, nano imprint, uh, all these processes will be inline integrated. I'm not going to detail here. The unit is running up to 20 meters per minute. Uh, it, can, it can run a very low tension up to high tension process. We do web cleaning. We do web uh, treatment of uh, plasma treatment. Then we do the first um, coating process. Then we have three meter of dryers with nitrogen atmosphere. We do slot eye coating, uh, stripe slot eye coating, and intermittent slot eye coating. We are able to scribe uh, surfaces like ITO films. And this was the first uh, registration module um, at this time, very high tech. At the moment, we are looking into registration accuracy of plus minus 20 microns which is quite efficient for solar cells. And all these processes happened under um, nitrogen atmosphere. Um, so what we're looking today is, of course, we're looking into uh, printing and coating of barrier layers, uh, the intermittent coated or printed of active layers, um, intermittent uh, barriers, we laminating uh, films to it, like barrier films, and we do laser scribing processes. Um, what, you need, what you need in these processes is the need for alignment. You're doing five or 10 different layers, which can be structured. Uh, so you need a very high um, alignment accuracy from one printing to the other. Um, with the traditional printing systems, you have an inaccuracy. So we redesigned uh, the standard existing printing systems to be more precise. You see in the different systems. Um, and we also made it possible, and that's the newest design here, on a slot die coding system, which is also, also register controlled, um, and where you have the ability to register in cross direction and also change the attack position um, of the slot die system itself. Um, so here we can control the parameters of the web, but also of the printing to reach accuracy of 20 microns or better. Target area here is 10. And it's a combination of cross and web direction um, control adjustments. And therefore, uh, we use, of course, um, a registration camera you can see here. And this camera, of course, got a lot of smaller, got more precise. Uh, we changed our um, systems here, our edge guiding systems, into more precise ones. Uh, we have wi winder guided systems, so we're not touching too many uh, rollers with the uh, good surface. So already here we can have a better accuracy in cross direction than before. Um, and of course, 
Um, if you look into registration, it's always a combination between web control, print, and coding control. And with the web control, you mostly control rollers and the edge guiding unit. And with the printing and coding control, uh, you control the cross direction of the web. So you do a pre-alignment and you do a registration alignment, which is an active alignment uh, in the running process. Uh, it can look like this. Here, an example of an RFID tag. Uh, so you see here the desired position, um, which is the blue line, and you see the printed position. So you see here, it has to be moved in a few microns. Um, and this, of course, you do in every print station. And one print station is reporting the position uh, to the other print station of the registration control. And that's also the reason why our slotters are register controlled. Uh, you have to reg register every step uh, in your process. You do a specific print marks, which can be totally different layouts. You see it two different examples. Uh, you use a correction algorithm, of course. Um, and it's easier to run high speed, but with a lot of materials in OPV, for example, which are expensive, uh, people prefer to run low speed. So we have optimized our registration control to this speed range uh, here, uh, which is specifically uh, used for print electronic systems. Um, and we differentiate between drift error, random error, systematic error, there's a leveling of these um, errors we have by algorithms uh, we design ourselves. Um, of course, there are a lot of uh, influences you have into the accuracy of your operation. Um, and the key is always to find out in a complete um, production line or pre-production line, like we have here at Printersend, for example, to find out the critical parameters for example, in the tension control, but also elongation of the web in dryer, uh, if you go vertical direction. So these are all the points which have a big impact um, on your registration accuracy. If we go into print electronics in OPV, uh, we don't have, have to be as precise, but let's say if we go into sensors, if we go into print memory, then of course everyone is looking for a higher accuracy, um, up to 10 microns or better. Uh, target area is anyhow five microns, uh, but this is more related to, to, um, to flexible display applications. We're also working in. Uh, so that's a little bit the game you are playing here and which everyone tries to optimize. Again, uh, it has to do or good registration has to do, or improvement of print and accuracy has to do with machining precision. It has to do with speed synchronization of all drives. Uh, you need control loops, uh, specifically tension control loops uh, of your tension control. Um, and then of course, the additive register control uh, with, with a precise algorithm, and that's much more important maybe then the precision of the camera system. So all these parameters have to be perfect to reach 10 microns or better. Um, if we go back to the unit, you see here some rotary screen printing processes. Um, and already in 2012, we looked into inkjet printing uh, to increase also here our registration accuracy. And we worked in the, in the winding station of course, with the ability with edge guided barrier films also here to do a precise uh, lamination. But of course, the other point, what we uh, thought about in 2012 was, of course, we have a very long process. We're using quite expensive uh, chemistry at this time, but also till today. Um, and we want to be sure that each layer is already functional and has a good performance. So for this, we went to in the next topic, and you see uh, some machine layouts uh, we are doing. It's always the same. You're winding um, off the material. You're winding on the system after 10 or 20 meters or 100 meters. Um, and here, first of all, you have the HMI, where you get the data out of the machine. 
a lot of people are using already today thickness measurement of the of the films, thickness measurement of the wet coating, thickness measurement of the dry coating uh, to compare this to see their coating accuracy. People store their specific data of the slot die coating processes, which are fully um, automated and motoric. Um, but we integrated, of course, systems like the spectroscopy, um, and we additionally integrate optical measurement to see surface defects. Um, and what we also now want to do in the new projects is we want to use this big data to use artificial intelligence to see what are the key parameters of improving our processes. At the time there, we did um, inline quality control, means ellipsometry and inline Raman from the company Huriba. Uh, this was already quite a big challenge at this time. And today, in, the, in a new project, which is called Real Nano, which is a Horizon 2020, uh, just running, we want to integrate uh, the ellipsometry, the Raman we have, um, together with the laser beam induced current mapping and photoluminescence imaging systems. So we want to add two systems where we can see the performance um, of the layer or of the device uh, in the process, in the inline process. You see here the different uh, schemes of the uh, project. I'm not going to detail here to save my time. A lot of partners, a lot of different ideas. And basically, we are using ex existing results from projects before uh, to improve here the performance of OPV devices. Uh, and we're not only doing this role to role, we are also working on OBPD uh, units. Um, and we have the company OED, uh, which is integrating all these results into. So which systems are we using? Uh, I mentioned it before, laser beam induced current mapping. So we really can laser scan the surface. We can map uh, the um, OPV device inline in a roll to roll operation. And of course, with photoluminescence, we see also here defects or variations in the surface. We can compare the position um, in these both systems of the po potential defects. And then, of course, we can take a closer look if there's any uh, difference, uh, let's say, in efficiency in this area. Um, and this you also can combine to complete uh, quality control of the whole role before delivering this to the next step. Uh, so we, we actually see the performance of the layer or of the device, depending on how many layers we already print and encoded. Um, all these systems are existing, but mostly being used in uh, discrete sheet-to-sheet -sheet applications. So we use them inline, roll to roll. So we produce a lot of data. Of course, we have to stabilize the web under these uh, systems. Uh, we already tested some um, sheet to sheet samples. Um, and now in the next step in the autumn of this year till end of the year, we will integrate the system into the um, pilot line for OPV at the University of Thessaloniki. And you can see here, this can be also done on big scale. Um, of course, Find here the areas uh, point wise um, of the defects. Um, and this will be the position in the unit, which is already placed in Tesla Leaky uh, for the operation. So here we will have the IPL tool, and here we have the um, EBIC tool uh, with the laser scanning. Um, and here we have the already existing uh, ellipsometry tool. Um, everyone is using already since quite a while. With this, I would like to come to an end to, to stay in time. Um, what you see here is our R&D center in Dormagen, also in our R&D center. You can take a virtual tour um, of the R&D center. Also in our R&D center in Dormagen, uh, we have testing equipment. We install it. We will install additional testing equipment. Um, so a lot of things also can be tested here. Um, and to summarize, 
I think improving the yield and reducing waste is important for production lines for PE. Uh, it's related to sustainability, but also improving the yield. Um, print electronics has different registration needs depending um, on the product. Um, PE needs very high accurate registration. Um, in the micrometer range, we need an inline quality control, which has to be transferred from discrete into road to road processes. And of course, industry 4.0, big data, artificial intelligence will be the key processes, in our opinion, uh, in road to road production lines for print electronic, but also for other production lines in different areas. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm ready for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. That was a fascinating talk. Um, so far, we haven't seen any questions in the feed. Uh, I would like to use this opportunity to invite everyone to the Co-Tima booth as well. Um, check that out uh, after the talk. And now is your chance uh, for you to uh, pose any questions. Um, what I would like to know is, um, what are you uh, hoping to accomplish with AI technologies in the near future? Uh, are there any other applications that are already on the horizon for machinery companies like Cotima? Yeah, we have uh, we have several projects in the um, overall ATH group. So also Kronat has projects on um, AI. Uh, we are working with, uh, for example, company Panda in Hamburg. Um, and the idea is to find the parameters which are influencing your coding result. So it can be one or two parameters sometimes. Um, and I think with AI, with the uh, specifically also with printed electronic sensors we use in the equipment, uh, we are able to detect uh, these, um, these errors. Um, and we want to use AI uh, to, to, let's say, to respond to these um, errors much faster than, for example, a standard operator would be able to do. Okay. Um, still no questions on the feed. Your final chance. I guess you covered everything today. <laughs> <laughs> no, not everything. <laughs> Time was not long enough, but okay. So this project has been running uh, since 2012 already, and it continues to grow. Can we put it like this? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, I think it's a very um, um, intelligent way of doing European projects mm -hmm. because 2012 it was already a big step, uh, and now we we have the uh, the platform. We're improving the platform, uh, scaling up, um, going into a higher TRL level with the unit. Um, and I think we will see after the end of Real Nano uh, that for sure there will be an improvement in efficiency, the yield, and, and other points. <laughs>